Hi friends, Pastor Terry here. We are Okotoks Alliance Church, and this is the 10-Minute Coach. I'm taking us into the sermon, the message, around Mark chapter 2, verse 20, uh, verse 18 through chapter 3, verse 6, uh, and that was a message that uh, I preached on Sunday, February 12, www.okalliance.ca. If you haven't found that, uh, you can go to our YouTube channel, you could go to our Facebook channel and find it saved there as well. Uh, this, this is a continuation of Mark's leading us into recognizing who Jesus is. Uh, he makes this statement up front uh, about uh, this being the account of, of Jesus, uh, the Messiah or the Anointed One, the Son of God, uh, and then has begun to demonstrate uh, through Jesus' actions, through his words, uh, his authority over, he's the authority to call people, he's the authority to teach, he has the authority to heal, he has the authority to command demons. And here we, we, we come in uh, to chapter 2, verse 28, and he has authority even over the Sabbath. The Son of Man is Lord over even the Sabbath. Uh, we talked a bit on Sunday about that uh, that title, Son of Man, as Jesus' favorite way of referring to himself. Uh, Mark will refer to him as the Son of God uh, on multiple occasions. Some will refer to him as the Son of David. Uh, when he's in Nazareth, people are uh, trying to belittle him by calling him the Son of Mary. We would expect that it's referring to uh, the, the idea that somehow he was born out of wedlock or conceived out of wedlock. Uh, so there, there are these various titles, and even after uh, his baptism, and in uh, Mark chapter one, and after the transfiguration in Mark chapter nine, both times we hear God speak, and on both times he uses the exact same phrase: uh, "This is my son, whom I am well pleased with, whom I am well pleased." Uh, and, and so, uh, even after. God himself, God the Father has spoken. Uh, Jesus continues to use this Son of Man reference, identifying himself with us, but then identifying himself with us as human beings, but then using a language that only God can use, only he can forgive sin. Only God can be Lord of the Sabbath. He commissioned it at the dawn of time at creation, on the seventh day he rested, and and that becomes the the pattern for us, uh, that we are to work and then rest, and then we are to work out of our rest. Sabbath provision uh, put into the Ten Commandments, the fourth of the Ten Commandments, uh, this this concept that it's it's it but it had become a binding obligation in Jesus' day, uh, the kind of thing that people got in trouble if they broke it, and the rules and regulations around the the finest kinds of details became this encumbering weight that totally lost sight of the purpose of Sabbath, and Jesus brings it back and says. I created the Sabbath for man, not man for the Sabbath. You can't perform your way into the good graces of God. Uh, this is a gift from him. It's his grace to you and to me to observe Sabbath. We talked about fasting similarly as this old thing that is brought New. Now, just a reminder, uh, Jesus refers to himself as the bridegroom. So I took uh, that liberty then to, to, to use wedding kinds of language to describe the something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue, uh, something old. The, the, the Judaic, uh, the Hebrew uh, system of relating to God was being replaced. And we say, how could that possibly be? Why would God do that? Well, something new, the, the newest renovation, uh, revelation of who God is expressed through Jesus. And, and now uh, the kingdom of God has come among us, the fulfillment of promises age old. Since the beginning of time, reiterated by the prophets, the, the, the promise of uh, of the Father, that, that, that Jesus would come uh, and he would pour out his spirit on human flesh, on those who would believe him, those who would repent and believe. Again, that's, that's language from uh, Jesus' words in uh, Mark chapter 1. So we uh, are looking at the reality then that what Jesus has brought, this newness, uh, the new teaching, the new example, uh, the, the new access to the kingdom of God, this is 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 not going to be contained within Judaism. It's, it's greater than, it's more than. Judaism was the conduit to bring Jesus to us through the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, and the, the laws taught us how 
messed up we really are uh, and how desperate we are for God's grace. And now that grace is manifest through Jesus. And, and, and now we have new garments. We have new wine skins. Uh, and yet we look to the old in order to benefit. Uh, fasting continues to be a priority for uh, the people of God. Denying ourselves in order to prefer God. Denying ourselves in order to pursue him. Uh, not in a slavish way, not in a, uh, not in a self-deprecating or self-damaging way, uh, but in a, anyone can skip a meal, okay? Uh, anyone can say, I'm not going to partake in chocolate. Uh, that, that's, that was a pretty common one through much of uh, the modern, more modern church history. You know, the idea of Lent, you give up sweets, chocolate, uh, and then on Easter Sunday, uh, the, the Easter eggs came from that idea, you know, eat some chocolate, enjoy some sugar again. Um, uh, there was some who would practice a, a mini Sabbath, a mini um, Easter on the Sundays. And so you'd get a reprieve from the no sweets, no chocolates. Uh, it became a, a, a binding obligation. Uh, maybe you've seen the movie Chocolate. That's an old one. I'm not endorsing it or recommending it, uh, but it does a show a bit of uh, how in, in some systems of Christendom, uh, it became law again. It, it was back to this Old Testament idea of thou shalt not, and man, you're in trouble. And, and so I spent a lot of time on Sunday trying to help us get at this idea that uh, this is a blessing. Uh, it's a blessing that we can relate to God through uh, the discipline of fasting. We can pursue him. It's how he wants to grow us into a greater likeness of himself. Sabbath as a gift, how he wants to grow us. I likened it to tithing. Uh, another sort of old thing that continues to be new in Christ as we prioritize our finances. Uh, and people will say, how can I give a tithe, a 10%? Uh, we'll start with two. Uh, start with 2% and see what God does with that. Uh, and, and then bump it up to four. Uh, same concept with Sabbath. Start somewhere. Start somewhere in some way in order to say, I am going to pause I'm going to set aside the distractions. I'm going to pause and I'm going to engage in worship. I'm going to engage in the pursuit of the priorities of God in my life. And I offered some particular um, language for this. Uh, the priorities, the idea that um, Mark Buchanan offers, uh, develop a ritual. Uh, candles, bells, I tried to, I offered a few suggestions. Um, Sabbath with your hands if you work with your mind. Or the other way around. If you work with your hands, well, Sabbath with your mind. Think. Take an opportunity to do something different. Uh, Buchanan suggests number three, identify that which most ties you to your day job and put that away. Put that away. Maybe it's your smartphone, maybe it's your computer, whatever it needs to be. A um, uh, little different approach, similar idea. Uh, Pete Scazzaro uh, suggests uh, stop work, enjoy rest, Practice delight and contemplate life. Uh, I might simplify it down to just two. Uh, worship and rest. Now, I, I really like the language of practice delight and contemplate life. I think worship is found in that. Uh, I think rest is found in that. Um, you, you find the language to put to this, which is helpful to you, and, and then don't allow it to become a binding obligation. Rather, allow it to be a joy, uh, a freedom. And see what God would do uh, if, when, we, when we give him uh, that 10%, uh, what can he do with the 90? He'll do more with the 90 than, he can do, than we can do with 100. Uh, he'll do more in six days than we could do in seven. Um, uh, and then I did put this question out, and that is, are we entering into a season where we as a church family uh, need to enter into a season of fasting? Uh, we have big decisions to make as a church family. Um, uh, one big decision in particular, uh, we have uh, we, we have experienced a fire in our building set by an arsonist. Um, uh, is this the time when we would say, God, what's going on? Did we do something that we need to confess and repent and make amends for? Uh, is there someone out there who's hurting that we need to figure out how to serve them, how to love them in the name of Jesus? Uh, maybe this is a season, and, and I'm asking you and inviting you to feed that back to me, what you're discerning. Uh, maybe this Lent season would be a window of time when we would do something um, more intentionally in our pursuit of Jesus than perhaps we've done in some time. Uh, 
terryl at okalliance.ca. Send me your feedback. Uh, this has been the 10-Minute Coach. I'm Pastor Terry. We are Okotoks Alliance Church. Thank you for joining me here. Bless you, and bye for now.